Okay guys, welcome to today's video. This is one of the videos that you guys always enjoy, which is me reacting or debunking another YouTuber's electronics repair video. Keep in mind, these videos are not picking on these people. I highly encourage if you have a repair you do, don't be discouraged by this kind of video. Make your video, put it out, help the world learn. So this is not to discourage people. The only reason why I do these videos is when you're doing something completely inherently wrong and in passing it off as this is the truth. So if you, if you go, this is the way to do this and you are 110% wrong, there's just no way you're correct about it. Um, then yeah, I'm going to debunk it. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, if things just, you know, aren't well produced, like my videos, my videos are not the best produced videos out there. I'm terrible at editing. I'm not going to judge a video. It, if you have a funny voice, I'm not going to judge your video. I have a kind of funny voice, apparently. People think I have a funny voice. I don't know. I don't think I have a funny voice. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to judge based on how you present it or anything like that. You'll never see me do that on the channel. But yeah, let's get into this video, which is about a 2009 is what his video is. Uh, this one's a 2007 or 2008 um, Impala Instrument Cluster, which it's the same board as this. His just has a different revision of this circuit here. Um, well, when I say this circuit here, I really mean like this right here. Slightly different board, but still the part that we're discussing is the same on the two boards. It's it it's the same generation and that particular component that he's discussing in his video is the same. So too long didn't read, didn't watch of this video is the guy that's making that that we're gonna watch his video, which is it's L1 Automotive Training is the name of his channel. Um what he's doing wrong is he's replacing a tantalum capacitor with a rectifying diode is what he did on his video. Um, it's actually a kind of easy mistake to make when they use these black tantalum capacitors. Yellow tantalum capacitors are much more obvious what they are. Uh, I, I don't understand why some manufacturers make their tantalum capacitors black instead of yellow, uh, which all of the tantalums on this board are black. I don't know why. Uh, I wish they would make them yellow so that way it is a little more obvious to the layman of what they're looking at. Because um, I would have, if I just probed this out myself and didn't have, you know, experience with the other ones, I would have assumed that's probably a diode too myself if I didn't know what those markings meant on there and I was just probing it out. So easy mistake to make too. That's, that's one of the things I want to say here is that is not a hard mistake to make. Um, and, and it, it is a fair mistake to make. But yeah, let's get into this. Let's watch his video. I'll try to keep what I'm showing in his video kind of short because it's pretty long-winded, like my videos. <laughs> my videos are pretty long-winded too. Uh, so I'll try to keep what I'm showing in his short so that way we can really uh, focus in on this. Okay, so this is L1 Automotive Training's uh, YouTube video. So as you can see, his is a 2009. Uh, so this is what I was talking about from here, if you can see my mouse circling. So this part of the circuit is different on his than mine, uh, but that's just, they replaced the uh, switch, the transistors that they were using to do the switch mode on this power supply with a IC. That's what changed. The inductor, so the inductor, the capacitor, the transformer, the diodes that come out to the screen, they're all the same. Um, and yeah, these, these little guys right here, they're diodes. Um, so, this is really the only difference on his board. Uh, and also this, this area right here is different on his board than on my board. It's just a different generation of it. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at this now. Chevrolet Impala that was shorted internally. Um, we have already replaced the cluster and like I showed in the previous video with a used unit and then we programmed that. So this one's just at the house. Um, so if you're going to get into repairing instrument clusters or automotive circuit boards or any circuit boards in general, I highly recommend what he is doing. When you get something that, you know, hey, it's more economical to just, you know, replace it faster. Let's just replace it and get it in the customer's vehicle, get them back on the road. If they'll let you, you know, hey, be like, hey, I will recycle this component for you, whatever. You know, can I, can I have the component? 
it's trash anyways. Um, so th then you end up with it and it's yours to experiment with. And this is an excellent way to learn. So highly recommend what he's doing there is, hey, I replaced this component for the com customer. Let me open it up and see, see what I can learn. Let's see what I can figure out about it. So uh, highly recommend that. That's a huge plus on this video is taking, taking somebody's trash and trying to make it work for your own betterment and learning. So good on him for that. I have just to kind of play around with, see if I can figure out what's going on. I had never had one that was dead shorted inside of the cluster. So I was interested to see what failed in this. Now, what I can tell you is that this board has been repaired before. Um, let me see if I can move this. Okay, so I'm going to skip forward after this, but what he's trying to point out here is that the component that goes on this portion of the board, which we'll get a better look at this when I put the camera overhead, um, but yeah, the component that goes over here has been replaced on there. Uh, I would venture to guess that that was also a um, tantalum capacitor that they replaced with a diode. Um, I don't have one of the boards that have that component on it for me to verify and know for sure. Uh, but yes, I would venture to guess that that was also a capacitor that got replaced with a um, diode. So here's the, he's going to remove the capacitor off of the board. Let's take a look at that. He's going to run into something that you will likely run into in this kind of situation. Look here. Tell me. Grab this component and then see if I can. Oh, it came loose pretty quick. Ooh, that is nasty. Okay, so as you can see, when he went to take it off the board, the pad had completely burnt off the board. Not uncommon to happen on um, on a component that's dead short like that. So let's go ahead and skip forward to where he replaces it. Let me find that. There we go. Uh, so we can see what he's replacing it with. You have a hint right here of what he's replacing it with, but let's take a look. Okay, so on to my kit, and I got a diode. This is what we're going to use. The rating is very similar on this diode for current. At okay, so I had to watch this video full screen probably like five or six times to catch that the the first number is four. So it's a 4001. So a one in 4001 is what he used, uh, which is a rectifying diode. Let's take a look at it. So this is a rectifying diode at 50 volts, one amp uh, with a, uh, that's the reversing voltage is 50 volts. Um, and it's forwarding voltage is 1.1. Uh, so if you were to use that as a rectifier, you'd have a 1.1 volt drop. But uh, that's really not important in this. What we are going to note is that that is a 50 volt reversing uh, voltage. And so we have positive negative going this way. So it would take 50 volts on the positive side to reverse to go to the negative. So uh, you would, it, it would never actually do anything <laughs> in this circuit unless you were um, in a rectifying diode really is not the best for dealing with transients and stuff. So it wouldn't be the best way uh, of if there was like a voltage spike of dropping that down. So yeah, um, 50 volts, it's, it's not go, it's never going to reverse because we're only seeing about 12 volts ish, uh, right there. We'll take a look at it on the oscilloscope here in a second and look at that. But yeah, so that's what he replaced it with. Uh, but we'll take a look at this. We have lights though. Oh, there we go. Uh, leave it on for a second see if there's anything. So it will in fact work like that, which is not surprising. It, 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 it's a filtering cap, not surprising that having a rectifying diode that's not ever going to reverse because really the only time you're going to run into problems putting that diode on there like that is if it were to start reversing um, and, and putting like a huge load on everything. Uh, that Then you'd have problems. But since it's 50 volt reversing and it's in the correct polarity stance that it's got on there, it's just not doing anything. That's that's all that's happening there is it's, it's just there. Um, so it's not going to... The, it's not going to filter out the ripple, which is the purpose of it. It's filtering ripple. We'll take, again, we'll take a look at the oscilloscope. You'll see it. Um, it there's still ripple anyways, but it's not super important because it's really just powering this. So 
yeah, as you can see, he replaced a capacitor with a rectifying diode. Doesn't do anything. Let's take a look at the board and actually see it. And I'll show how I know for a fact that it is a um, capacitor and not a diode. Actually, let's show that really quick on screen here. So uh, we'll get a look at it so you can see it better on the on the camera, but this is a 2007. It's got the same circuit. This, the circuit really is the exact same on the two. Uh, it is a different inductor on the two of them. This has a 330 micro Henry, and this is a 470 micro Henry. Um, but it is also a different scream. So yeah, pr pretty much the same with just some very slight variations, but yeah, you have a 10 dash 35 right here. You have a 10 dash 35 right here. So let's take a look at this 10 dash 35 on there. Okay, so you saw me pointing to it. It is C142 is 10-35. So let's go into the uh, BOM down here. C-142 is 10-35 capacitor. So this is a 10 UF 35 volt 20% rated capacitor. We will also go look at it in circuit so that way we can see the circuit. Let's just control F, C142. All right, so here's where C142 is in the circuit, which is right there by the inductor. So you have the inductor and then you have the C42. So same layout, relatively pretty close. Like I said, it is a different inductor. Uh, this this one has a uh, 470 micro Henry inductor and this one is a 330 micro Henry. So that's really the only difference I see looking at it. Uh, the, sh the, the shocky diodes might be laid out a little bit different too. Because uh, it, it looks like this one has one more shocky diode than that circuit has. Um, but that's really the only difference I'm seeing. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this okay. It is kind of a crappy angle. The plug just forces you into that angle. So you can see the oscilloscope over here. Yes, I'm lazy and just using my webcam to show the oscilloscope instead of using my other oscilloscope and piping the video directly in. Oh well, get over it. So uh, we're gonna take a look at this capacitor. So here is the capacitor right there and we will just go ahead and turn it on. And as you can see at the top of the screen, we do have some ripple on there. And that's what that's doing is filtering out that ripple. This, this screen underneath my hand that you can hardly see is not actually flashing. It's just the camera capturing it like that. So yes, the, so that's what this capacitor does is it helps filter out the ripple so it's not nearly as nasty looking from the switching on there. And we will go to an actual normal scale for this voltage and you'll see what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's not actually flashing like that to the naked eye. That's just the shutter rate of the camera capturing it. It looks perfectly normal. So now we will take a look at it so that way we can see the actual voltage there. Oh, let me go to measure so that way we can see it. Voltage, voltage RMS. All right. So there we go. It's 11.3 volts. So you're never going to, um, to actually trip that diode. Well, the, you're never going to reverse the diode. You're not going to get any reverse voltage through it. So uh, yeah, like I said, that diode that he put there is just not going to do anything like that. So replacing the diode with, or replacing the capacitor with a diode, all that you're going to do is have more ripple. But honestly, the ripple itself is not that terrible. When you're at a normal scale, you can't even see it. What he did doesn't, isn't the correct repair. It's not, I don't think it will damage anything unless you were to put a diode that is a, that had a low enough reversing voltage that then you started reversing through there. Uh, then you, then you could run into problems and damage it, but putting, you know, his diode that he put on there would be the equivalent of just not putting anything back on there and it would work like that. Okay guys, I figured before I end the video, Let's just take a look at it on the oscilloscope of how it would look had he um, had I done the same thing he did. 
Now, I don't have that same diode laying around, so I'm not gonna put the diode on, but we already know it's reversing voltage is 50 volts and we're only seeing 11 volts. I don't think it's gonna reverse, so let's just take it off and not have anything on there. We'll get the same results. So that's what I'm going with. We are going to test this out now. So we have no diode on there, uh, no capacitor either. Uh, it's, it's just blank. So it's supposed to be a capacitor. He put a diode on there. We're going to just test it with nothing. Should get the same results and it hopefully won't damage anything. So now we have a massive amount of ripple on there. Uh, so yep, yeah, that's all is what it was doing before was filtering out the ripple because that, that ripple was at, remember when we were at this scale, when we were at the 10 volt scale on here, we couldn't see any ripple. It was just nice and clean looking. So let's go down to, we'll, we'll auto scale it. We'll just let it auto scale. So, um, let's go ahead and turn that back on and just click the auto scale. And wow, do we have a lot of ripple now? I mean, that's like massive. So that's the purpose of that capacitor there is to eliminate that ripple. I don't, I still don't really think you would damage anything with that amount of ripple going to this VFD because that's really just for powering. I, I believe that only powers the heating coils on um, this. I, I would really have to look into it. I, I'm just going to play it safe and say, let's not put nothing on there. Let's put a, um, a tantalum capacitor back on the board. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one.